Greetings, gentle viewer. I'm Science Viking, and, well, I'm back. Now, I did pick up that chainmail that we saw in the shop. Now, let's check it out for a second. There are a couple of things to pay attention to, like being on the right window. When I always do that. When deciding what equipment to use. Step one, let's look at equipment load. That's, I'll show it, point out with the mouse, equipment load is here. This shows the number on the left is how much we currently have, the number on the right is our maximum. We're at 14 units, I guess pounds, out of 52 that we could equip at once. But the thing is, you don't want to always have your maximum equipment load. Because the way it works is, if your equipment load is a quarter of your maximum equipment load, that or less, you move really fast. If your equipment load is half of your maximum equipment load or less, you move pretty fast. And if your equipment load is more than half of your maximum, you move pretty slow. For this character type, I really recommend going with, and if you're a new player in general, I really recommend going with medium armor. That is having more than a quarter but less than half of your maximum equipment load so that you move at medium speed but have pretty good defense. Now let's check out that chain mill let's go with the head for now hit delete to compare the two and I see the numbers in blue are better than what I currently have the numbers in red are worse than what I currently have so it has higher poise which determines how much damage I have to take for me to be for my actions to be interrupted it has higher bleed resistance it has worse poison and curse resistance it has better physical defense and better magic defense, but worse fire defense and lightning defense. Better durability, or worse durability, that is, uh, less durability, and it is heavier than my current equipment. And the rest of the chainmail has pretty much the same pattern. I'm not going to go through every piece one at a time to show you what they all, how they all stack up. For now, I'm actually going to keep my Pyromancer starting gear, because... It protects me more from fire than the chainmail does, and the next thing that I'm going to be dealing with involves being hit with fire. So, I mean, I suppose it's appropriate that the Pyromancer gear gives you better protection from fire than most other gear does. So let's head down here. This is, you can do this immediately after beating the Taurus Demon. And at the bottom of these stairs, turn right. Doesn't appear to be anyone here, but go through here. This is important. And now we see one of the coolest NPCs in this entire game. Ah, Make sure to hello. To you don't look hollow, far from it. I am Soler of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of... I have come to this Sorry, great but land. Please the excuse the pop-up. I can't really edit my that out. my very own son. Do you find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I won't be able to edit out that pop-up that happened while he was talking because he won't ever say that again. Oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition. Keep, say yes to him. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined in a land brimming with hollows. Could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Say so yes again. This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. And he gives us the white sign soapstone. We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly cooperation. Of course, uh, we are not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> All right, let me explain what just happened. Solera of Astora, one of the best NPCs in the game, praise the sun, gave us one of the most useful items in the entire game. This thing is in the same league as the Estus Flask, actually. I'm gonna drop my black, my regular firearms. Actually, I'll drop my gold for it. 
but I'm probably not going to use it very much. What it does is if you sweat into your quick bar and hit E, you leave behind a summon sign on the ground. You can then check your summon sign. I feel like canceling my summon sign. Now, you leave a summon sign on the ground. Other players who are not hollowed can see your summon sign and can be summoned, or rather can summon you to their game to help them. When you are summoned, you are an entity called a white phantom. A white phantom follows most of the same rules that you do when you're playing in your own world, except that you can't use your Estus Flask to heal yourself, but, and you receive half the souls from each enemy that's killed. <clears throat> the way it works is the host still receives souls normally, so if either of you kill something, the host receives the normal number of souls and you receive half that. If you help the host defeat a boss, you receive a humanity, and we've talked about how useful humanity is. You also receive half of the souls you would gain from defeating the boss, so helping other players is a great way to accumulate souls and humanity. In addition, if you die while you are summoned, you return to your world with no negative consequences whatsoever for having been killed. Which means that one of the effects of using the white sign soaps, soapstone is that you can attempt a boss while helping another player to see how that boss fights and get a feel for its abilities and how tough it is before you have to attempt it yourself, which is invaluable for your first time through. That's what I mean. The white sign soapstone is very is one of the most useful items in the game. It's in the same league as the Estus Flask. Now, I'm probably not going to use it very much because it would kind of derail things for the Let's Play, but I will probably at least once demonstrate what it's like to be playing as a Phantom. Just at some point on ca as bonus footage, I'll demonstrate an instance of myself acting as a Phantom. Alright, this bridge appears to have enemies on it. I feel a little paranoid. I'm going to kill myself. And onward! Magic. Oh my god! Ah! Yep, that's why I wanted fire resistance. Sprint, sprint. It's the dragon from earlier, except if we stay on the bridge, it will attack us. We aren't even close to being strong enough to take that thing out. So we're not going to try. Frankly, there's not really much benefit to killing the thing anyway, so I don't really recommend doing so. Anyway, if we go down those stairs, the Q to kick the lock, and walk back over the ladder so we can climb down it, this room looks kind of familiar because it's the room with the bonfire that we kindled before the fight with the Taurus demon. Generate all. We then we're fully healed like usual, and since we've already, that's why I wanted to kindle that bonfire because this is the bonfire. This is not only the bonfire we're going to be working from for most of the undead bird. It's also the bonfire we're going to be working from for most of the undead parish. So you really want that bonfire to be kindled because well, it will help you a lot. All right. You may notice the camera angle is a little bit different, and I don't have any souls or humanity anymore, because, yeah, I died. Actually, a couple of times. I'm going to edit all of my deaths into a montage at the end of this video, and we can count them together. Counting with Dark Souls! Yay! Anyway, before we move on, I want to show you something up here. If you look over here, under the dragon, and behind where those hollow soldiers are, you see a doorway leading to what looks like an altar. That place is called the Altar of Sunlight. That's where you can join the Covenant that Solera is a part of, the Warriors of Sunlight. The way that covenant wo Covenants work, if you don't know, is basically they're in-game organizations that, you can that allow you to engage in some activity and then reward you for it. Most Covenants are in some way about invading other players' games and murdering them. No, really, the majority of them involve invading other players' games and killing them in some form. That's the exact way that it works in the Covenant. But the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant is actually about helping other players. The way that it works is you are if you're a member of the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant and you help another player defeat a boss, you receive, in addition to the other rewards, an item called a Sunlight Medal, which you can then offer at the Altar of Sunlight to increase your rank within the Covenant. 
leveling up your rank within the Covenant rewards you with, primarily, lightning elemental damage inflicting miracles. These are quite useful if you're a miracle using character, because it's pretty difficult to find things that deal lightning damage in this game, especially towards the beginning. And a number of difficult enemies are fairly susceptible to lightning damage. In addition, regardless of elemental properties, these miracles just deal a lot of damage. So if you're going to be a miracle using character, then you really do want to be a warrior of sunlight because they give you some really useful spells. Now, this character isn't going to use miracles, so I'm not going to join the Covenant. The Covenant I'm going to join we haven't seen yet. Anyway, I'm past the enemies that use fire and poison for a while, so I'm going to quick switch over to my chain now. Just imagine the main character, like, ducking into a corner and really rapidly stripping off all his clothes and jumping into something else. I guess. It is funny that you can't, since you can't see the main character through the equipment screen, it kind of gives him a privacy screen while he's changing. And now we're up to the area where I died several times. Alright, climb up here. Go up over to sorceries. And zap this guy. The problem is, if he gets too close to you, he can kind of run under the soul. Ring. That one was actually a little close. And if you look through here in the center of the screen, you'll see what looks like a boar covered in metal. You know what? Screw that guy. That guy is. This area is the reason why I've died so many times, and it's really specifically because of that boar. So, he's also the reason why I wanted Black Fire. First, we want to lure these guys out of the courtyard down to here, where we can take them on without incurring the wrath of the boar. I'm tempted to do a demo of me actually just charging them and showing how horribly and quickly they die. We don't want to be dealing with the boar while we're dealing with anything else. We also really want to take the high ground for this. So go to the right, go up the stairs like so. And see that guy with the spear. If you back down the stairs, then the archers won't be able to hit you, but you will still be able to fire soul arrows at the guy with the spear. I probably don't have enough soul arrows left to take out both archers with them, but I may have enough soul arrows left to take out an archer with them. Oh no, they take out quite a bit of their health. Mostly managed to avoid being shot. And more. Alright. I've even gained a humanity, thanks to the humanity meter, to make up for the two that I lost because I died and didn't recover my blood stain. Yay! And that blood stain just gives some souls. Okay, first, soul arrow. You know, let's see how much damage soul arrows actually do to that guy. If I can lock onto him without falling off. Alright, not very much. I mean, I suppose I could help him with soul. I thought I already killed all the enemies, but I guess there was one left. Retreat. If you fall down, retreat through here where it's difficult for the boar to follow. Switch back to your sword if you accidentally hit V and switch to the bow. Kill the guy who chased you down there. And it looks like we may need a new plan. Yes, if you're locked onto an enemy and the enemy falls off of a ledge, there's a good chance your character will follow them down. Now let's just zap him with our remaining soul arrows. Shoot him right in the butt. Alright, let's quick swap over to... Let's get back in here where he can't follow us. A quick swap over to the fireman. You may wonder why I'm bothering to fight him. I mean, I'm already past where he was guarded, so why should I keep fighting him? And the answer is because if I kill him, he doesn't respawn. Like all of the other enemies in this area do. So if I kill him permanently, I don't need to deal with him, and I'm going to be going back and forth through this area a few times for various reasons, so it's better to just get rid of him. And the best weapon to do that is the black firebomb that you can get as a gift. Finally. Finally. How you like it now? How you like it now? Now, I can't teabag him, so I'm just going to move on. Now, you may have seen a hollow, just a regular generic hollow, running through back this way up these stairs. And you'd naturally want to follow him. Be careful, though, because there's an ambush of all these guys. Let's 
put the back to fire on so we can take them out as a group. Uh, I want to save the rest of my fireballs for something else. Slice them open. There are going to be a number of ambushes. In this area, pretty much all you're going to be fighting are the regular generic hollows until we're outside again. But you're going to be fighting them in groups. This is a great demonstration of how even the weakest enemies in Dark Souls can still be dangerous if you aren't careful. As you can see, I have actually taken damage, and while I haven't died fighting these guys in this playthrough, I have died fighting these guys before. So just be careful. Mainly because they really like to ambush you. They attack really fast, so it's easy for them to stun lock you. And just, you really don't want to be overwhelmed by them. Alright, climb up here. Up this ladder where there are going to be even more hollows. Yep, quite a few of them. Go ahead, poke me. In case you're wondering, when it comes to summoning, you can summon other players to help you fight boss fights. You can also summon NPCs to help fight boss fights. The way it works is other players are either there or not, depending on whether another player has chosen to use their white sign soapstone to leave behind a summon sign. But there are NPC summons for certain boss fights, and those are always there. If the NPC, if they're supposed to be there, they'll be there every time that you attempt that boss fight. One of the reasons why people like Solaire so much is because he is the NPC who is available to be summoned more often than any other NPC in Dark Souls. So, he is pretty much everybody's best friend. It's actually led to him being nicknamed bro -Lay. And in addition to always being available, to being available for the largest number of boss fights, he's available for a lot of the really difficult and frustrating boss fights. In fact, Solaire is the only summon who, if you complete a certain side quest, you can summon Solaire to help you against the final boss. And he's the only NPC who can ever be summoned to help you against the final boss. Alright, now let's traverse the white light. Be careful because there is an ambush immediately on the other side of this fog. So, right, wait, no, there's not. I was thinking of somewhere else. There isn't an ambush here. There's an ambush elsewhere. This is a new enemy type. This is a Boulder Knight. They are a cut above anything that we've been dealing with so far. See how I took a decent amount of damage even though he didn't hit me, and see how I just took a whole bunch of damage because he did. Oh. Okay, gotta go quiet for a second while I try not to die. Estus, 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 Estus. The easiest way to deal with them is the reason why I decided to conserve my fire. Because they will take a considerable amount of damage if you hit them with fire. Weapons. Even so, that was actually kind of close. These guys are tough. Be careful. They also can enter a particular... They're the first enemy to have what I call a counter stance. Which is that they'll stand in a certain way with their shield down but with their sword in a particular position. If you melee attack them, while they're in this stance, they will always block your attack and then counterattack and do a whole bunch of damage to you. It's basically the enemy's version of a parry. Letting enemies just randomly parry occasionally would be overpowered, so they don't do that, and instead there is... it's telegraphed so you can tell that they're going to do it if you know what to look for. Basically, it involves the enemy entering a stance that just seems too good to be true. Like they're way more vulnerable than they should not even let themselves be. Alright. Kill that guy. And this. This is the area I was thinking of earlier. This is the area where there is an ambush immediately after walking through the doorway. So, watch that. See, we have another ball device. This guy has a different shield. That shield is a bit better. And this guy is a bit more better. Still do that. And then the one long reaching stab will take it out. Grab a Titanite Shard. These guys have a pretty high chance of dropping Titanite Shards, so it's actually worth it to farm Balder Knights a bit. In addition to that, Balder Knights actually drop Balder Armor, the armor that they're wearing. This is actually a really good set of armor. For this character, it would be heavy armor. But I may actually farm the Balder armor set off of these knights anyway, because there's a boss coming up later where I actually want this character to be wearing heavy armor. But even if you don't, though, amusingly for my knight character, not my knight character, for my warrior character in another playthrough, it, who is actually wearing Balder armor, it's 
it's medium armor for that character. That character has a lot more endurance than this character does. Okay, gonna be a quiet for a second. I'm trying not to die. In case you're wondering what that massive gout of blood and my character being thrown back was, that was a headshot. The crossbow guy got a headshot on me. Okay, I'm far away. Nope, they're still chasing me. Keep running. Spacebar. Yeah. Sometimes the best bet is literally to just run away as fast as you can. At least until you can heal. In larger areas like this, it's often smart to just flee. Okay, and I think we're going to fire off. Of course, using fire off in the narrow corridor is rather difficult. Oh. You just saw. Okay. Let's try this. Not using a black firebomb for these guys. I'm saving the last few that I have for something else. But regular non-black firebombs still do plenty of damage. Regular STD bombs still do plenty of damage. Also, I'm never letting that joke go. Just in case you guys are wondering. I'm never letting go the, the STD bomb joke. Alright, swap back over my Astus Flask. Always a good thing to just have as your active item. Here, there was that last crossbowman. On to him. Sidestep the arrow and stab him. And then slice him. And then he's dead. And if we head through here, we'll see a number of interesting things. Most prominently, a bonfire. But we're not there yet. It was quite a while before I discovered the sprint. Areas like this always made me really impatient before I knew I could do that. But hold down space bar and run. Down here, even farther down. Down, down, down. There's a lot of down in Dark Souls. And I'm not talking about baby birds. Alright? Light the bonfire. And then rest of the bonfire. Yes, the enemies will respawn, but I actually want to be safe. I'm not going to spend my soul. Alright, in case you noticed a minor hiccup, it's because I actually refreshed the recording. I've been noticing some issues with... I haven't died yet. I've been noticing some issues with the audio gradually drifting out of sync if I go a while, if I record a really long a really long stretch all at once. So at bonfires I've been basically just saving the recording file I have up to that point and starting a fresh one. And then I'll just edit them together into one long video so the video can still be the same length. Haven't gotten any complaints so far. Anyway, if we head down here under the bonfire, we meet this guy. Andre Vastora. Well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of Astora. If you require smithing, then speak to me. He is the second smith we encounter who can reinforce our equipment. He can also modify equipment, but we won't be able to do that yet. And actually, we won't be able to do that for a little while. So I'll get into modifying when it's actually possible. First, I want to purchase some. Magnetic shards. I'm probably going to get both the weapon smith box and the armor smith box so that I can upgrade equipment at any bonfire, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm interested in getting... I'm in the market for a more dexterity-oriented weapon, so I'm going to check to see if any of these scale with dexterity better than our current sword does, and they don't. Alright, let's reinforce some equipment. I feel like reinforcing our long sword, long sword plus one. Let's see the damage went from 80 to 88. I reinforce it again, the long sword plus two. And now its damage is 96. We can also reinforce our armor, and I'll probably need to do that. Neither of us want I to may see well you. end up doing there's a good chance that I'll end up doing some grinding in this area because frankly the undead parish is actually a very good place to grind early in the game. And so I may demonstrate what grinding looks like and then also just do a good amount of it off screen. Alright. The rest of the bonfire. May as well repair our equipment. At least the stuff we're still using. Yes, repairing things costs souls. I forgot to mention this. I purchased the repair box from the merchant in the so you can repair our equipment. You really don't want your equipment breaking when you're in the field. And I can level up a few times. Let's see. Dexterity would increase the damage of both of our weapons. Strength would only increase the damage of... Well, it would increase the other one less. Dexterity, vitality, endurance. One more dexterity, and that'll be good. Right. One of the reasons why I'm going with dexterity for this character is because, at least according to the wiki, higher dexterity increases the speed of casting animations. And you may have noticed, pyromancy animations are kind of slow. 
So I want to be able to cast spells for that. Also, I may be making a mistake by switching over to Soul Arrow, but I kind of have a plan. There isn't much of the Undead Parish left yet, so I'm going to quick demonstrate the rest of it, and then the boss of the Undead Parish is going to be part of another video. It, that video may be a bit shorter, which I suppose the good news means that it'll be out sooner, and I may also include more bonus footage with it. Alright. Sidestep the arrow, stab, swing. Two hard, two heavy attacks. And I really need to make up my mind about whether I'm going to use magic or physical to take these guys out. Because that bit of indecision wasn't really very helpful. Alright, so it's body, hollow soldier shield. I haven't really compared... I actually haven't compared the hollow soldier shield to the shield I currently have. It might be an improvement. You know what? Let's check. Alright, so I'll have to hit delete for this. Blocks 100% of physical. It is a little bit heavier. Less blocks, less magic, but and less lightning, but more fire and has more stability. And I do have the strength to use it. I'd say that's actually an improvement. It's a little bit heavier, but if we check over here, we should still be below 50%. Of course, I can't really do math. I made it in biology, so... Yep, we're still below 50%, just not by very much. I'm going to keep putting points into Endurance because, frankly, I want increased stamina and the extra carrying capacity is pretty nice, though. I'm probably not going to move to equipment that's much heavier than this is. Yeah, these guys do. Okay, they deal with them pretty well, unless they let their guard down. It is really fun to punish enemies for attempting to use their healing items. It's really fun to punish enemies for using the distance for this, but I'm going to need my fireballs. Alright. Let's head through here. This is one of the most dangerous areas in the Undead Parish. It's one of the reasons why I didn't want to attempt this until after I turned on the bonfire, so that I wouldn't have to re-record everything in order to re-record this area. Go ahead and survive that. That. Also, if we run over here quick a second, we can grab a halberd. It's one of the better dexterity weapons in the game, but if you equip a halberd, you can't have a shield, and you have to just block with the weapon. And weapon blocking really doesn't work in Dark Souls. It has very low stability, so it's very easy for enemies to break your guard, and it doesn't absorb all that much damage. So you really don't want to rely on blocking with the weapon. You want to have a shield. You, so if you're going to use a weapon in both hands, you're pretty much just going to have to not block. And if you're going to not block, then you really want to be a bit more shield. So if you're just starting out, get a shield. Shoot off. Get some souls. Now for this guy. This guy is very tough and very dangerous. And so part of how... And also... On the ledge above us is a guy who has sorceries and is going to be fleeing soul arrows at us. So, equip the bow in both hands just by hitting the attack button, which for me is H, and then hit shift to enter zoom mode. I feel like just poking this guy with arrows at him before he gets close. Okay, looks like his shield blocks 100% of physical. Hit V to switch back to our sword. Hit C to switch back to our pyromancy flame. Provoke him into swinging the dodge while him during this very slow zoom the fireball. The shield also blocks less fire than it does physically. There. And that's why we want to keep our distance from this guy. Because ow! Alright, he's gone. And since we have oh he dropped something. Ooh, a Titanite shard. This guy, like the Metal Boar, or that Black Knight from the Undead Bird, isn't going to respawn. Once he's dead, he's dead. Okay, well, since we're out of fireballs, I may as well subtract my Sorcerer's Catalyst. Now we deal with the enemy that likes to pelt us with soul arrows, because there's a shiny thing under that altar, and I want it. Ow. That hurt a lot. Use the pillars as cover. It's mainly important to know that he's there. When I first played, I didn't... I hadn't... When I first played Dark Souls... I hadn't gotten any sorceries, so I didn't know that that was Soul Arrow, so I didn't know what was hitting me. I figured it was just like a trap or something. It took me a while to figure out that there was actually a guy up there shooting at me. 
All right, hit V. Now that we're locked on, we have a ranged attack of our own. Still want to avoid the The problem is that he's just at the edge of the lock on. As you can see. The ideal is ideally you want to provoke him to come down. Keep shooting. Oh, and I can't interrupt his attacks, but he can interrupt mine. This is frustrating. Alright, let's try a new plan. Hit shift to go back into, into FPS mode. And that was a headshot. So the enemy do it to me, and now you see me do it to this guy. Hit, then step back out. This is a little bit cumbersome. The PC controls might be easier if I was actually using the mouse instead of the keyboard camera controls. But I've never, I've always felt like it's too sensitive to use the mouse for this. So I've never really felt like I have a good controller. Then again, I'm also one of those heretics who prefers a controller for aiming in an FPS over a keyboard or mouse. Everyone else, everyone says that a keyboard and mouse is better, but I personally have always preferred a controller. Maybe it's because I grew up with console FPSs, and so I only discovered FPSs on the PC later. Alright, hit V to switch back to the sword. Now that that guy's dead, there is obviously an upper floor to this area, which leads to the boss, but I'm not going to go after that yet. First, I'm going to grab this item. This item is a Firekeeper's Soul. One of the most valuable items in the game. Be very careful what you do with it. Once you've got the Firekeeper Soul, go this way to this elevator, which will take you down. Quite a ways down, actually, because this elevator will take us back to Fire's Shrine. This isn't a one-way trip. Once we've taken the elevator to Firelink Shrine, it will be available for the rest of the game for us to get back from Firelink Shrine to the undead parish. So now we have a shortcut. Alright, let's head down to actually that NPC I told you not to talk to before because they didn't matter. Now they matter. Run across this area. I feel like jumping over this wall. And forgetting to jump the space bar in this because I was playing Dark Souls 2 earlier and in Dark Souls 2 space is not jump. Alright. Talk to this NPC. No response, she cannot speak, but she gives us the option to reinforce our Estus Heroes. Yes, we can consume a Firekeeper Soul to make the Estus Flask permanently strong. This is extremely useful. Now, before we attempt the boss of the Fire. I'm not going to. As I said, I'm not going to fit the boss of the Undead Parish into this video. That would just make this video too long. So. I'm actually going to stop here, because you really want to rest at the Firelink Shrine Bonfire, since it's already killed the rock. So I'm going to rest, level up a little bit, endurance, and attack me, confirm enforcement. And with that, I'll see you all next time when we take on the boss of the Undead Parish, known as the Belgar Royals, and see why Solaire is so much fun to have around. In the meantime, I love you all. See you next time. Bye. Um. Oops. I think I'll just edit that one out. Ow! Oh, how? Jerk. You jerk head. You meanie head. Okay, I'll put that as this character, I'm not planning on using Miracle on me, so the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant wouldn't really make much of a difference. Ow! I'll get you some damage. Take more damage. And now that he's healing, I can do that. And I'm dead again.
Dark Souls is hard, ladies and gentlemen. 